Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about container runtimes. Now, um, as you're going through this journey, you're gonna hear container runtime all the time. You're gonna hear some of these terms that we're about to kind of cover or, or some of the container runtimes, but I do wanna make something uh, very clear. Um, while yes, you can use the term engine and runtime interchangeable, they are different. So the, the container engine is gonna be the overall platform that allows you platform uh, that allows you to to uh, I, I'm going to say manage and build your container right and all of these are container engines but they are also container runtimes so the container engine is going to be the overall platform that allows you to manage and build the container whereas the runtime the runtime is going to be what allows you to mount and run the container so the runtime actually lives underneath the container engine. Now again, you can use them interchangeable if you're taking an exam and they say runtime engine or they say, uh, if they say, sorry, container engine or container runtime, they're most likely using these terms interchangeably. If you're dealing with a developer or you're dealing with somebody in your organization uh, and, and they, they use one of these terms, most of the time they're saying the same thing. Again, just for technical purposes, you're obviously watching these videos to learn. I just wanna make sure that you're clear in that these things are actually different. The runtime is again, what allows you to mount and run the container where the engine is, is the primary in other words, the runtime actually communicates with the OS and says, hey, I want to mount XYZ container and, and start it up. Whereas the, the engine is actually what gives you the tools, et cetera, to build, manage, and maintain that container. It, it really doesn't do anything with starting it up. It, the engine will make a call to its runtime and say, hey, I need you to run the container. So I just want to make sure that you understand that architecture, okay? Um, all right, so... The first container engine that I really ever learned about was uh, was Docker. <clears throat> uh, Docker is a is a pretty cool feature. Um, is a pretty cool engine. You, we can run this on Linux as well as Windows, which makes it really really flexible. So if you were just learning containers, you know, way back in the day, you could really only do it on Linux. You had to get an Ubuntu machine or something like that. You had to install Linux of some kind in order to run Docker. But now you can actually download the Docker user interface on a Windows machine and you can start learning containers. So there's no reason for you to, to build a separate machine. You can do it right on your Windows laptop or desktop. That being said, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the production, I'm going to say prod here, most of the production instances of Docker that run containers are going to be on a Linux machine. So at some point, you're probably going to want to, uh, even if you use, again, WSL and you download Ubuntu on your Windows machine, you're probably going to want to download Docker on Linux and you're going to want to understand how that works. Okay. So, but again, it, it's pretty cool. Um, Docker is, is, I would, in my personal opinion, probably the most popular container engine and container runtime that you can download and you can install to be able to start playing around with containers. Now the next one is Docker D. Now it is Docker, sorry, Docker D, Container D. Container D is a little interesting because it's actually a subset of Docker, right? <clears throat> um, Docker created Container D and then it was actually donated to um, the CNCF, which is the Container, no, uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, not that that matters. Again, I just, just give you information. So Container D being a subset of Docker, now you're going to wonder, okay, well, you know, what's the difference? So Container D is a really lightweight version of Docker D. Docker, uh, I keep saying Docker D and Container D. You understand what I'm saying? Docker is going to give you a full feature set of developer tools, right? It's going to give you a full set of maintenance, manage, et cetera, tools. Whereas Container D is going to give you a much more lightweight version of this. Now, in today's day and age, again, if you're watching this video now in December of 2022, Docker is kind of the number one deployment that I see of containers. But Container D is very quickly closing that lead. So if you're new, um, well, let me actually back up. If you remember when VMware first came out, ESX was the primary uh, operating system that you would run, and then ESXi was kind of the free one, right? Well, over time, ESX disappeared, and ESXi became the primary because it just functioned better, it was more lightweight, etc. So there's a good chance that if you watch this video six months from now, a year from now, Docker may go away, and Container D may be the primary uh, engine that you see out there in the world. Today, most of it, again, is Docker, but Container D is, is very quickly gaining in that lead, okay? Uh, again, Container D, more lightweight. Docker is going to give you that, that full 
feature set, okay? Uh, keep in mind that all of these do essentially the same thing, right? All of these allow you to run containers. It's really gonna be a matter of what does your organization use? What are you guys looking to use? Um, is there a standard, you know, what, what is it exactly that you guys are, are looking for, okay? Um, and then you have Cryo. So Cryo is another popular one. This is actually very similar to Containerd, where both essentially will, so I'm just gonna say registry here. So both Containerd and Cryo will essentially pull all of their containers from a registry and then allow you to manage that full life cycle of the container and all the processes. So these guys are, you know, they, they basically work the same. Um, they're gonna have a very similar feature set, really what it's gonna come down to, and they're both uh, essentially lightweight. What it's gonna come down to, in my humble opinion, is which one do you prefer as far as functionality, commands, things along those lines, okay? Cryo was actually developed by Kubernetes. Uh, so if you, uh, again, you're probably new to containers if you're watching this video. So again, I'm, I'm doing this off the top of my head. I have some bullet points just to remember to hit, but what is Kubernetes? So Kubernetes is essentially vCenter for containers. So if you think of what vCenter does for you in the VMware world, Kubernetes and OpenShift are what vCenter are to the VMware world. Kubernetes and OpenShift are that for the container world. So imagine that you have a cluster of containers it's really not much of a box. Let's just say that you have a cluster of containers and you know inside of each one of these clusters you're running multiple containers, right? And you want all of these things to operate on different hosts and you want them to be uh, resource managed and you know essentially you want them load balanced and all that kind of stuff. Kubernetes is the orchestrator, just like vCenter would be. Kubernetes is the orchestrator that would actually say, okay, I'm gonna put this on host one, I'm gonna put this guy on two, uh, these two are gonna go on three because I have more resources or maybe I only have three nodes that I can deploy these on and I'll make sure that they're all load balanced, et cetera. So Cryo was actually developed by Kubernetes. So if you're gonna, de if you're gonna deploy, you know, obviously when you get there in your container life, if you're gonna deploy Kubernetes, you may wanna think about running Cryo because again, Cryo was developed by Kubernetes. Uh, and then you have a couple more. Um, I'm not really gonna dive into these. I just wanted to um, just kind of list them to just show you that you do have a bunch. And all of the ones that I've listed are, um, are a member of OCI. All right, OCI stands for the Open Container Initiative. And this is really a standard to make sure that all the containers are operating by some kind of governance structure, okay? So all of the runtimes that I've managed, or that I've mentioned, I know kind of this looks like Scribble, but all the ones I've mentioned are essentially OCI compliant, so it makes sure that all of these things are, are falling within a standard. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.